All righty, let's get started. Welcome everyone to the College Admissions Collaborative Highlighting Engineering and Technology College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have a fantastic school here with us today. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation, as well as others, are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash C-A-C-H-E-T. Uh, I'd now like to turn it over to our presenter, our panelist, and this is Rensselaer Polytech Institute. Sorry. Okay, sorry. So hello everyone. My name is Hanif Proper. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions here at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Rensselaer at a glance. Um, so we have about 6,200 undergrads, about uh, 1,400 graduate students. So we are a mid-sized campus. From one side of campus to the next is about a, a 10 to 15 minute walk. Um, as you can see listed below, we have a little bit over 40 majors, over 60 minors, um, over 200 different clubs, and we have 23 uh, varsity sports, two of which are Division One, and the other uh, 21 are Division Three. Um, so we are located in Trenton, New York, uh, capital region of New York. We're about two and a half hours from New York City driving, three hours from Boston, three and a half hours from Montreal. Um, the city of Troy is a mid-sized city where it's more so about 60,000 residents that live here in the area. Um, neighboring cities, Albany, which is the capital of New York, of course, um, as well as Schenectady are other major are other um, major cities within the area. Albany has about 90 to 100,000 residents. Schenectady has about 50,000. Um, so um, within the area, there are bigger cities, but in any direction you go to in 30 minutes, it's usually becomes more suburban and rural. Um, when I like to mention uh, the city of Troy, I always like to mention the capital region, where the capital region has about eight different colleges within the area. So there's always something going on for the student, the, the college student ranging from 17 to 22. Many of our students will go downtown to Troy um, to go to the farmer's market. Um, there's a lot of small um, uh, boutiques and um, restaurants that students will go to as well, or they'll venture out to Albany. Albany is about 10 minutes away, and students can um, get on the CDTA, which is the Capital District Transit Authority, bus line for free. Um, here just showcases a lot of uh, what our, our um, alum have been doing over the last couple of years. Um, so as you can see here, the at sign and my email, Fenway Park, the old Yankee Stadium, uh, the major component is sunscreen, the Ferris wheel, um, and the list continues. Um, so it just really showcases um, many different things that you know our alum have done to change the outlook of how we view the world. Here is another alum, uh, Commander Reed Wiseman. He served as a flight engineer with NASA. Um, Commander Reed Wiseman, uh, about five, six years ago, um, conducted more so an information session for our students to really get an understanding of what he specifically does with NASA, as well as um, what entails to be that uh, specific job are due at that specific job. So even if our alum don't come back to talk to our students, they do try to make a way, even if they are in space, um, to come talk to our students and give them some um, good knowledge about what they potentially can do after graduating. Um, before I even start with uh, the different schools, I did forget to mention, I do apologize. Um, I have um, one of our other assistant directors of admissions, Jennifer Yeager here um, with me today. If you have any questions, please write them in the chat and she will um, uh, reply as soon as possible. Um, so while I'm talking, she's definitely um, working in the chat uh, box, talking to everyone that's asking questions. Thank you again. Um, so here at Rensselaer, we have five interconnected schools, the School of Engineering, Science, Architecture, the Lally School of Management, and Humanities, Arts, and Social Science, or as many of us call it, Haas. We have a lot of acronyms here, so definitely, definitely remember that. 
Um, so for the School of Engineering, which is our largest school, about 50% of the biology, chemistry, and physics. The Lally School of Management has two undergraduate programs, as well as the School of Architecture. And then for Humanities, Arts, and Social Science, it's more so on the applied science side. Um, students here are STEM focused and driven. Sorry, I think I got disconnected and I do apologize. Um, but this slide right here is the School of Architecture. Um, the School of Architecture has two undergraduate programs. The first program is the Bachelor's of Architecture where um, students more so on the creative side of architecture. It is a five-year program um, just because it allows students to sit for the professional license after graduating. The four-year program is the four-year in building science where it's more so I'm um, going into the construction components of architecture. Um, as you can see here, we have a couple of facilities off campus. So CASE, CASE is the Center for um, Center. Okay. All right. Can everyone see this? Everyone, extra science and college facility located um, in Brooklyn, New York for our um, architecture students. Um, they can come here for a semester and pretty much learn from the different architects that are there at this um, specific firm. For the School of Engineering, as mentioned before, we have three, um, or we have 11 different focuses, um, but our most popular focuses are biomedical, aeronautical, and, um, and mechanical engineering. Um, all of our 11 focuses, um, typically speaking how uh, semesters go, your first three semesters are more so theoretical, more so um, really understanding theory as a whole in the overview of engineering. After the third semester, traditionally, that's when you start doing application, a lot of group work projects, and activities will be done in and outside the classroom. For the School of Humanities, as mentioned before, applied science, students are not taking um, reading, writing, um, uh, language courses, applied science within humanities. Most popular majors is games and simulations are in sciences, and it is pretty much how it is written out. It is a, a video game major. You'll see a lot of students will actually do this with um, computer science. Um, there is a overlap of data courses that students will take within GSAS as well as computer science. Um, but as you can see here, there are many other majors that students can choose from. The one requirement that we have for our students is 24 credits in humanities. So this is the time that they'll be taking um, classes that fall under these specific majors. Many students will actually pick up a minor um, just because they are taking these four to five classes. Um, most of the time it will end up being, they have to take an extra class to fulfill that minor or they already have um, fulfilled that minor with taking those um, five classes. 
The Lally School of Management has two undergraduate programs. Um, the first program, the BS in Business and Analytics, is more for the student that is interested in mathematics on the BS level or the business level. On the BS in uh, Business and Management is for the students that are interested in business as a whole, and students can pick up um, uh, concentrations that are listed below. The most popular concentration is entrepreneurship. Um, looking down, we do have a couple of accelerated programs. Um, one within the School of Business where there's a BSJD program, it's a 3-3 program. Um, students will um, come to this program knowing that they already wanna come before freshman year. They apply specifically to this program and they'll do three years here at Rensselaer and then they'll go off to do three years at Albany Law School. Um, we do have a few of those accelerated majors. Accelerated majors. Um, we do have about three. So just um, definitely keep that in mind. Um, going to computer science, the overall popular major here. Rensselaer. Uh, Biology, chemistry, and physics. Um, and again, overall, about 10 student values within the School of Science. The Physician Science Program is for the student. Again, it's another accelerated program for the student that is interested in um, going into a, the medical field. Students will do three years again here at Rensselaer and go off to Albany Medical College. Um, a good thing about these accelerated programs, it uh, frees up a year and it also allows students to go straight through to, uh, straight through to their specific um, um, medical or law school. Um, you don't have to take it, the MCATs or LSATs. Again, once you apply into the program, you just maintain a 3-2 average and then you go off to that desire um, secondary school. Oops, sorry, just skipped one. All right, so for our information technology and web science, or as we call it ITWS, again, remember a lot of acronyms here. ITWS, as I like to say, is a design your own major under the realm of computer science. It allows you to infuse um, different types of uh, 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 wants or different types of focuses together in one. Um, so still having that computer science background, you can infuse um, just different things together like business, humanities, all together in one. So if someone's interested in something like cybersecurity or someone's interested in um, software, hardware within the application, this would be a good program for you. How I like to break it down um, within the realm of computer science, ITWS is the application base. Um, computer systems engineering, which is in the School of Engineering, is hardware based, and the computer science is uh, just solely software. So that's usually how I break it down of um, the computer science backgrounds. It really depends on what you wanna go into and how you focus yourself within computer science uh, for our school. All right, so for research opportunities, um, about 75% of students will participate in undergraduate research, either for pay or credit. This can start as early as second semester freshman year. And generally students say it is relatively easy to receive a form of undergraduate research. All they do is go on the website, uh, see what professors what, see what professors doing what during the semester. And then they're glad enough to say yes to be a part of um, specific types of research. As you can see listed below, um, these are all the type, the type of uh, interdisciplinary research areas that students will go towards. It doesn't matter in any major. Um, you can definitely find um, research opportunities. Um, I always like to mention when um, a couple years ago, maybe four years ago, there was a, a group of computer science students that created this website uh, for our students to track the shuttle services real time. Um, so, you know, one person or a couple of people made the, the legend, um, other people made the tracking, actual tracking service, um, and just uh, did the data um, behind it. Um, this is something that students use to this day, but this is a form of research that a group of computer science students have done um, on our campus. So in any major you are in, you definitely can find research here. All right. So for our co-terminal programs, co-terminal co program is a program that students will receive their undergraduate degree and master's degree in five years. Um, a good thing about this particular program, it allows students to 
maintain the undergraduate costs. So for whatever you're paying for the four years, we'll be transferred over for that fifth year. So merit um, and financial aid will stay the same. Another good thing about this particular program, it also um, allows you to mix and match accordingly. So let's say you're someone in mechanical engineering and then you wanna go off to uh, business to get a master's degree in business, you definitely can. Um, so that's um, how that runs. If you want two degrees in engineering or two degrees in science, you can as well. Um, students would generally apply to this program about 70 credits in. So that's traditionally junior year. So you do have time to do this if you do want to go into a co-terminal program. All right, so for uh, co-ops and internships. Um, so for us, a co-op is a six month venture off campus where a student is working a full 40 hours a week at a company of their choosing. Um, an internship is more so fluid where an internship can be during the semester or in between semesters. And the amount of hours that um, is allocated to you as a student or the amount of hours that you can dedicate to the specific company. Um, nine times out of 10, uh, co-ops and internships are paid. Um, we, as a school um, and the CCPD, which I'll, I'll talk more about, will definitely help you look for paid co-ops and internships. So um, they are uh, definitely paid. Um, hit listed below are just a few uh, companies that students will gravitate towards. And um, these are just a few companies that we have strong connections with, um, as well as a few uh, colleges that students will go to for graduate programs. For the CCPD, which is the Career Center for Professional Development, um, this is a facility that is located on campus that helps students out with acquiring these co-ops and internship opportunities. They also conduct uh, career fairs fall and spring semester where the students will go to in any year, freshman year through senior year, more so the freshmen and sophomores are looking for um, opportunities for internships and co-ops. The seniors are looking for job placements. A lot of these companies will um, hire on the spot or do in, um, you know, on the spot interviews for our students um, that will help them out with acquiring jobs faster. Um, between both, C uh, both semesters, about 500 companies will come in and the CCPD also helps out with um, getting your resume critique. They do this big uh, critiquing about a week before uh, the career fairs and they call it uh, resumania, which just really helps students out with understanding um, keywords to use for their, um, uh, their resumes and how they can um, really find a job that's fit for them. So the CCPD also does mock interviews, and sometimes the mock interviews are actually um, from a, a worker that is actually in these specific companies. So that definitely does help out overall. All right. So we have this program called the Arch, and I know you may have be, have been thinking um, if a student is uh, you know going away for a semester to do a co-op, how are they graduating on time? Can they graduate in time? Um, questions like that. So as you can see here, the ARCH, the ARCH is a mandatory program that um, allows students to take summer courses immediately after sophomore year to relieve the time either fall or spring semester of their junior year to do a co-op, an independent study, things like that. Um, so it's more so like experiential learning. We're really pushing our students to go away for this uh, the semester and really learn um, from these particular companies something that they can't learn within the classroom. So it just gives you real life hands-on skills. Um, so you can put on your resume and build that. Um, so you can be um, more so um, aware of what you, wanna, uh, what you wanna do after graduating um, and allows the companies to know that you have, you know, some type of uh, understanding for that particular uh, job. All right. All right. So here uh, we have what we call class cluster learning agency support for students. And it is a full four-year program. It's more so the, the um, a program for our, for our student life overall. Um, so we have the first year experience program that you know, students will come on campus for two days for orientation, really meet the other students, um, uh, the class deans, uh, professors, faculty, staff members, they'll meet everyone on campus. Um, the, uh, they'll also meet different types of clubs and the clubs are, you know, really recruiting students to, you know, join their clubs. So it's really a good um, two days just to really get acclimated with um, 
how it is to be an um, RPI student on campus. Students are required to live on campus for the first two years. After that, they can live off campus. Um, a lot of the off campus homes are relatively close to the school. So um, there is not, um, you know, taking a bus from the other side of the city to go to class. Um, if a student wants to live on campus during your senior year, they definitely can. There is many uh, different types of junior and senior level housing. Each student will get an advisor. An advisor is the person that will help them out um, with picking and choosing classes and staying on task for those four years. And then each year also has a class dean. Class dean is more so helping out with the social aspects of uh, school. Um, for freshman residence halls, um, they have LAs, which are the learning assistants. And the learning assistants are really helping students out with the transitional period from being a senior in high school to a freshman in college. They're really teaching those um, skills like time management skills and sleep management skills, anything that will prepare them from be, for, for being a freshman here at Rensselaer. All right, so for a lot of our uh, student, uh, sir, student clubs, as mentioned before, uh, one of the first slides, this is about 212 different clubs here on campus. Whatever you're interested in doing, um, academic, non-academic, more than likely there's a club out there for you. All right. RPI Flying Club, as you can see, um, we do have um, the outing club, hiking, skiing, snowboarding. We're about 30 minutes from Vermont, and we're about another 30 minutes from um, one of the popular mountains called Wyndham here in uh, upstate New York. Um, you can see a lot of dance and acapella groups here. So we do have a bonker. We do have, you know, a rusty pipes um, here on campus. Um, again, acapella, many different acapella and dance groups here. We do have a lot of diversity clubs as well. We have about uh, 15 different diversity groups um, all connected into, um, excuse me, all connected into our affinity groups. They do a lot of week um, weekend activities um, as well as the other 200 different clubs on campus. Um, so there's always something going on here on campus. If you are a part of the specific um, ethnic background and wanna be a part of these clubs, you definitely can. If not, and still wanna be a part of these uh, different types of clubs, you can as well, um, open for all of our students. All right. And then the, the list continues here. Um, we do have Greek life on our campus. Uh, Greek life has about 25% of the student body population. So if you wanna be a part of Greek life, you can. If not, it is not an overwhelming factor here at Rensselaer. Um, I do suggest going on our website and definitely checking out what we have to offer for different types of clubs and activities, just because there is a lot going on um, here on campus. Again, mentioned before, 23 varsity sports, two of which are division one's men's and women's hockey, and the other 21 sports are division three. A lot of students will go to our division one um, hockey games, um, as well as football um, on campus. Um, as you can see here, we do have a, a big football arena. So we do have a lot of students that will actually go to um, the football as well as hockey games here. And we also have a handful of club sports. Um, these club sports do travel, they are traveling teams, and a handful of intramural sports as well. Intramural sports don't travel, it's more so in-house. Um, so you do see um, many more students actually doing intramural sports um, just because it is in-house. You don't really have to practice if you don't want to. It's just more so having fun with friends um, on a late night or a weekend. So I'll get into the application process. All right, so um, we have three different applications for students to choose from. The Common App, the Coalition Application, and the Canada's Choice Application. More so commonly, students will choose the Common App. And here are a few of the different deadlines that we do have. So early decision, one and two, early action, and regular decision. So as you can see here, the different deadlines that we do have to offer, early decision one and two, are. Um, they are binding. Early action is non-binding. Um, for the physician science program, it um, has a different deadline from the others. It has a November 1st deadline. It's not a binding agreement and it's not an early decision agreement. Uh, it's November 1st just because um, it allows students that are in the physician science program um, to do the interviewing processes for that specific, that specific um, 
application. Outside of that, we don't have any um, interviews. Um, we do not do interviews here at Rensselaer. All right. So when looking at the application, we have a holistic approach and application review. With that being said, not one thing sets us off on admit or denial here at Rensselaer. Um, we typically like to see three years of science all the way through physics and four years of mathematics um, through pre-calculus. Uh, it says here calculus is recommended. It's only recommended because you will, you will, will be required to take a, um, a calculus course in most cases here at Rensselaer. Averages speaking, we see an AA minus student. So on the 4.0 scale, it's about a 3.7 or above. Um, for APs, APs, um, typically taking fours and fives on those particular tests. IB sixes are above. And if you're taking college court, college courses, pretty much looking at the course description to see if it correlates with the course that we do have here at uh, Rensselaer. We are completely test optional uh, for this year. Um, due to COVID um, and the restrictions that students have uh, been seeing that they can't go to a test site, um, we are completely optional. Um, it's more so up to you to submit your standardized tests um, for um, the school. I usually give the 50, middle 50 percent because um, some students want to submit in their test scores. And as of two years ago, um, middle 50 percent was uh, between a... 1370 and 1490 SAT, and then for ACT was a 29 to 33. Again, just um, just mentioning it just because some students want to submit their test scores in still, but again, completely optional and up to you. Um, when we say we're test optional, we really are test optional. All right. Again, when looking through the um, application, um, we do um, look for other things as well. Um, so extracurricular activities is any type of leadership opportunities. Um, definitely do list, um, list all that you have been doing in the last four years. We definitely will take a look at that, um, as well as any leadership opportunities. We also look at demonstrated interests. Um, demonstrated interest just based, is based upon um, the communication that you have uh, between admissions, the admissions office and yourself. So if you're emailing us, if you're doing um, virtual visits and personal visits, even doing the Strive scan, um, cache um, information session right here, being here, we uh, we look at demonstrated interest with that as well. Um, so everything that you're doing in, uh, with communication is definitely part of the demonstrated interest. And we definitely do look at that when we are looking at applications. Um, we require one letter of recommendation, either from a math or science teacher. But of course, you can submit in more. Your culture advisor will give you one if you are part of those. Um, your guidance counsel will give you one as, uh, as well. So we typically see three letter of recommendations, but again, we only require one. One essay, a personal statement. Um, so you can more so freestyle your own essay, or you can do the prompts that the other applications um, or yeah, the other, ap other applications will give you. We don't require a supplement essay, but many students um, or some students will fill out a supplement it's more so the why RPI statement, and you just specify, you know, why you want to come here um, to RPI. For cre creative portfolios, we require um, for the School of Architecture as well as the music major, and completely optional is GSAS, Games and Simulations, and Electronic Arts. Um, we look at demonstrated interest for um, our or demonstrated um, financial assistance for our. Um, Domestic students, uh, just by filling out the CSS profile on FASPA, uh, we um, will give students, uh, you know, uh, need-based aid. On the other side of things, uh, once you submit your application, you're considered for merit-based um, aid. Merit is just based upon the overall grades that a student has received in high school. Um, so it's not based upon the standard, standardized test, ACT or um, SAT. It's not based upon that. Again, it's just based upon the overall grades here at Rensselaer. All right. And we always um, allow or uh, you know encourage students to really um, go on our website and look all that we have to offer for our, uh, our students. You definitely could go on a virtual tour here and um, see 
the different buildings and what we have to offer on our campus. Um, if you can't come in person, definitely, um, you know, take a look at the website and just really see um, the, the tour online. Also connect with us on the different social media platforms. You came here to talk to us in this information session, but we do have longer information sessions usually. Um, usually they go for about 45 minutes to an hour. We talk more so, more so in depth with um, a lot of different majors as well as other um, programs for our, our school. So it is a bit different from this, but you can always check it out on our YouTube page. We do have um, some of the information sessions on our YouTube page, um, as well as uh, check us out on Instagram. Instagram really gives the day in day out life of a student and it really gives you an understanding of how a student is on campus, how they feel about campus and things like that. So it gives you more of a, a real aspect and a real uh, a lens from uh, the student's perspective. And um, that is the end of the uh, slideshow. If you have any particular questions, um, we definitely can answer them. Um, if you write them in the chat or the Q&A, um, I can um, answer them live. And um, I can also put in um, the chat, my email address. So if you have any questions after, um, you can um, definitely email me. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. That was great. No problem. I, I, I lost connection and I thought I was going to go over time. So I, I kind of like, you know, <laughs> but I, I do apologize. It just randomly went out, but it, it, it worked That's out. That's okay. I think everything, <laughs> I think everything from that point on was, was great. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Alrighty. Great. So I am going to wrap up here for us. So uh, thank you again for presenting and thank you everyone for joining us here today. When you close this window, there will be a quick uh, five question survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions if you're interested. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other recordings at strivescan.com slash C-A-C-H-E-T. Thank you so much and have a great night.